YouTube and Happy New Year and welcome back to my Adobe Reports and Analytics tutorials. This week I am going to be covering how to do campaign classifications and how to set them up within the user interface. So to begin with, uh, we first want to go um, up here on the star and get into the admin tools and go into your report suites get that loaded. Make sure you um, have the correct report suite selected for the campaign that you're going to try and uh, create classifications for. And this is sort of a first step of what you need to do um, before you go ahead and um, add any kind of uh, query strings to any tracking codes, uh, the query string tracking codes to any URLs for campaigns and things. Um, the first thing to do uh, generally is to set this part up first. So Going under conversions, you want to go under conversion classifications. And um, these kind of classifications aren't just for campaigns. Um, you can see here there's a drop down menu and you can do them for a number of different things. Um, I, for the most part, have always done them for campaigns, but I know that there's a lot of other um, purposes for the other ones. And um, if in the future I have a client that has me set these up uh, for um, some other types of classifications other than a campaign, um, I may do a tutorial on that in the future. But for right now, it's just going to, I'm just going to focus on campaigns. And you can see that I've already created some. Um, I actually ran a um, ad campaign on LinkedIn last year, and I created um, these classifications. By default, Creative Elements just kind of is out of the box. The rest of them I created as date enabled classifications. So um, they're you know they're they're enabled for um, certain date ranges that kind of thing. And there's numeric classifications as well. And apparently there's numeric two which is in beta right now. Um, and those are the classifications I decided to set up for my campaign. You can add any kind of classification you want. And I'm not even sure if there's any limitation to how many classifications you have. And then you can also do, um, you can here you can add another classification underneath this one. So they can be hierarchical. Um, you can, and then also you can, you can either add, you can edit, or you can delete. And if I went in here and edit it, you can take a look and see. Um, I have the name of it, I made sure it was date enabled, and then there are options under here that you can create as well. And um, I'm not going to go into detail on that right now just because I've actually not um, had a need to use this. This is where you go to create um, and add classifications and things. So that's step one. Um, step two then is going to be here you have the classification importer. Now this used to, this entire system for campaigns and classifications used to be called Saint. So if I start saying things about Saint, don't be confused um, because that's what I've always called it in the past. And it was, I forget what Saint exactly stood for. It was Site Catalyst something. Um, I forget what the, the other letters stood for, but um, I just, I, I've used it as Saint for a very long time. Um, all right, so um, selecting the report suite, making sure you have the right one. I mean, if you're already in a report suite, it kind of just auto-populates auto that. Um, data set to be classified, etc. This is if you want to download a blank template. So if you've just created a whole new hierarchy um, and you've not um, done any um, run any campaigns or anything through this yet, or run any classifications th through this yet, um, then you want to download um, a blank template so you can fill it in. Um, and it's going to end up being a tab eliminated file. Um, however, I already have created one. Um, so if I want to go back and edit the, uh, the classifications, then I would want to go through, and you can either do browser export or FTP export. Personally, I prefer the browser export. It's easier. Um, and uh, you just kind of go through all of the um, options in here in terms of um, date filters and just, you know, whatever whatever options that you decide that you want in terms of um, the actual tab eliminated file that you want to export. And then you click export file. And um, since I don't have um, Office on this system, I went ahead and saved this as a PDF. So this is basically what it generates. And um, I open this in uh, Microsoft Excel. And uh, you want to make sure when you download one of these, either if it's blank or if it already has data in it, um, you want to make sure that the, the, 
first four, actually the first five rows, that you don't touch them. These are not to be edited at all, period. Just don't touch them. Um, otherwise, you're going to have problems when you import this back into the system later. Then what you do here is you all of your um, query strings uh, will show up over here. So these are the these are the query strings I created for my campaign. These are the ones that ended up going uh, getting appended um, with question mark CID equals at the end of um, the URLs for my campaigns. And um, then this is how I classify them. So creative elements. So I had two types of ads. Um, I had um, ones that showed just charts and then ones that showed just people in the ad. Um, and then you can see here I had three flavors of um, the chart ads and three flavors of the people ads. And um, then, you know, campaign name, I named it lead generation. It was a lead generation campaign. That's why I was running it. Um, it was, uh, vendor name was LinkedIn. Um, and so in this case, you know, I could say LinkedIn, I could say Google, I could say Yahoo. It depends on where you're, where you're serving the ads up. Um, and so I could have taken the same ads that I created and run them on Google, etc. And then ad type. So in some time, some, sometimes you can have a text only um, ad or you can have picture and text or, you know, any number of things. And I just personally decided to um, call out that those uh, picture and text. And I have not yet gone through and added in date launch, date edited, uh, date ended for this campaign, uh, which I can still do. That's the one nice thing about this system. And you can see here that it still says Saint up here in the in the file that you download. So <laughs> um, they haven't gotten rid of that yet. Um, but the nice thing about this is, is if you're running the campaign, as long as you have the coding set up in your scode.js uh, file um, to capture uh, query strings. Um, the default is CID equals, although you can name that anything you want as well. But anytime you, if you have that set up and then you set up your query strings on your ads so that you're capturing the CID, whatever follows the CID equals, and then it's going to be this little string here. As long as you're capturing that in your system, um, then you can come back in and you can fill this part out later. So this part is not important at all. Um, but I generally recommend uh, my clients make sure that their uh, classifications are set up ahead of time. Um, I have run into problems with that in the past. That may have been um, a glitch that uh, no longer exists. I mean, this was yeah, five years ago when I was running into the problem. But um, nowadays that may or may not be an issue. But you definitely want to make sure that you have your S code, um, you have your developers make sure that that S code.js file is updated to capture uh, your query string um, information. And that's, again, that's more technical. That's, that's a, a developer thing. And I'm not going into go, going to go into those kind of things in these tutorials as I am not a developer. And I'm going to say something wrong when it comes to that anyway. All right, so once you've downloaded that file, you edit it, and then you import it, um, like so. So you use the import file, and you can either do browser import or FTP import. I, I always go by browser import. It's faster, in my opinion. And you have an option here. When you import that file, um, you can overwrite data conflicts. So if you think that there's going to be data conflicts between what you've edited and what's in the database currently, um, and you know that what you've edited is what you want and you don't mind it overwriting any conflicts, then you can go ahead and select that and it will it will overwrite any conflicts. If you're not sure, don't check that box. You know, and it will definitely let you know after it's done um, importing the data whether or not there were conflicts, how many there were, etc. So that you can go back in um, and go through and say, okay, why am I conflicting? What's going on? Um, and then you can also check here automatically download classification files after the import is complete. So after you've imported your file, you can download um, again so that if there's been any new um, traffic, any new data uh, for um, tracking codes and query strings that haven't come, uh, that weren't in the file you were editing in the first place, then you have a 
updated version. All right, so those are your options, and then you can import the data uh, back into the database like that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like once we've had a chance um, to run data through it. So when it reports and analytics, and then we'll go under campaigns. And by default, um, we have tracking code. And by default, you will always have the tracking code report. So as long as that scode.js file has up, been updated with the tracking codes, etc., um, you're going to have the tracking code uh, report running. And oh, it, it didn't take my change on the date. OK, there we go. So by default, you'll always have at least this report. Even if you haven't set up your saint file or your classification importer file or whatever you want to call it, uh, if, even if you haven't set that up, you will at least have this report to refer to. And you can see here, here's my uh, query strings, and here's the traffic that I've had. And it even tells you, you know, like how much traffic you had during that time period. Um, visits unique visitors and page views that weren't related to um, your query strings at all. And um, if you want a nice clean report, um, I often will uh, do a does not contain none and take that out of there. Um, so that's just a just a, a quick quick little side tutorial there on using the advanced filter is to just you know if you want to clean up your reports you can um, use this to does not contain and you can actually add and remove um, things to search on and things but it just kind of cleans up your report a little bit especially if you're sending these reports to an executive who doesn't understand um, what that none means and is going to ask questions and stuff and sometimes it's easier to not include it. So just a little side note there. All right, so that's just the default uh, re tracking code report. But as you remember, I set up um, these classifications. And so we can take a look at this um, this way. So you can see here um, that my charts um, ads actually got more traffic than my people ads. I didn't get a lot of traffic. It wasn't a terribly successful campaign, but I had a very low budget and I think I only ran it for about three or four days. I did not run it for a very long time. So that's, that's the reason why, but I, my traf my site doesn't get a lot of traffic either, but I en ultimately ended up deciding that my ads with charts in them, uh, were we're getting clicked on and getting viewed a lot more often than the ones with people in them. So for future reference, if I'm going to do um, a lead generation um, ad campaign from my website, I'm definitely going to lean towards having charts and graphs in my uh, ads and not people. So um, that's definitely something that I learned from that. And you can do these, you can do correlations with these things as well. I don't have a ton of traffic, so it really doesn't make a you know a lot of sense and I don't have a lot of different variables to look at but you can um, you can break things down by time spent per visit um, by video if you have videos on your site especially if you're driving people towards videos um, just you know there's all these different options and things you can break this traffic down with now if I had like several thousand um, visits on these on these elements and things I would be able to show you some really interesting um, correlations and things but I don't so I'm not going to waste your time so that's how you set things up through the admin console in the report suites um, how you uh, import and export um, the uh, tab eliminated file and then um, how you get to the reports themselves and then also just make sure that your developer has set up the s.getQueryParam to um, uh, track your query strings. And like I said, the default tends to be um, the letter CID, but uh, your developers or your IT department may have um, some other ideas or, or um, have your own uh, methodology for doing these kind of query string tracks tracking or maybe you're using a third-party vendor you know talk to them about it um, see what they would recommend uh, but if not you know just the default s dot get query param um, should be set to CID by the default um, if you don't want to um, get creative and do your own and um, and then once you've got that set up you know you're you're capturing any tracking IDs that you've got going on um, 
um, out there on, on your campaigns and things. And, uh, you know, definitely if you're working with a vendor or an expert who's been doing this before, you'll, you'll, you'll have an understanding of, of how that goes. And um, you're capturing that data, and then you can uh, run everything through um, this, these campaign reports and get some really good correlation data um, and things and see where, uh, where people are going and what people are doing once they've come to your site through your campaign. Um, and I think that's pretty much everything I have to show this week. Um, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, um, I have more tutor tutorials to come, so please um, subscribe to my channel. If you have any suggestions of tutorials you would like to see that I haven't done yet, I would appreciate a comment below. Otherwise, until next week, take care.